Hi all and welcome back to the Tech Garage. And this is my NUXT. It's a modernish recreation of an XT class computer with a few quality of life improvements. Here we go. First off, it is a micro ATX form factor and it accepts a regular ATX power supply. This is the cheapo 500 watt unit. You can see there are four expansion slots, all a bit. And the only thing that's in it right now here is the Texelec Resound 2 OPL3. This is essentially a, not a sound blaster, but a, just an ad lib card. I've never had an, an actual ad lib card, so I have no way to compare it. For now, it just works. I, had, I ordered mine directly from Monotech PCs with a couple of options. For instance, we have ourselves here the AMD 8088. Here's an Intel 8087 math coprocessor. It has a full one megabyte of RAM. In addition to it has the Trident SVGA, that's 8-bit. And this one's also maxed out on the amount of video memory it can address. So it's a bit overbuilt for what it is. It also has a 64 megabyte CF card, which you can just barely see right there. All right, let me flip this thing around. Okay, back to the front. Here we have a five and a quarter floppy. This one's a little distressed. The case is damaged right here and the lever's broken. Fortunately, it doesn't hold in place, but it's okay. It doesn't have to do anything. I've already converted all of my legible floppy disks to disk images over 10 years ago. The three and a half, on the other hand, is gonna see more extensive use. This is gonna be the primary way of getting stuff in and out aside from pulling out the CF card and plugging it into a modern computer. The USB ports and the sound are going to do nothing. It's just, it is what it is. We'll go ahead and flip this thing around. Okay, here's the rear of the unit. We have our PS2 ports up top, mouse and keyboard. Unusual because that came out later with the PS2, which succeeded this. We also have a single serial. Oop, monitor just went to sleep. Parallel port, VGA, and then here's the CF right here, and then there's the activity light. Fortunately, the case is slightly damaged. This is from the previous owner. I was going to ignore it. Here's the AdLib clone. You only get the single speaker out. There's a chime. Then there's usually a knob wheel from what I've seen in pictures, but this one doesn't have it, so you have to adjust it by hand. There we go. There we go. Triton BIOS. And testing memory. Now this does have a CMOS you can enter, but we're going to skip that for now. It, it just scrolls up like how DOS does. Most XTs didn't come with that. In fact, none to my knowledge did. Okay, first thing I normally like to run this are some games. Here are some that came with it, and some that I added. You can see by a lot of the dates there. One of the things they had added to it was this game called Paku Paku. Which is a Pac-Man clone. I'm going to go ahead and back out of it since we don't really need to play that here. You can see it takes a little bit to recall and then play, put the text back on the screen. Let me show you one of the ones I like to play. This is from one of the first computers I learned to actually operate. It's a game called Sokoban. It's a maze game. It's going to have a little bit of freak out because this is expecting a CGA screen. It's just saying, press any key to continue. Then it asks you your machine type. We're going to lie and say it's a an IBM. And then we're using the keyboard. See the guy's moving awfully fast. Guess he has to pee. And for some reason, this one always defaults here. I'm not sure why. And then you have to type in the number of the floor you want to start. In this case, 01, and then press A. 
And then as you can see, you just move around and your goal is to put all of the boxes here on top of these diamonds and they light up with that color when you've done that. And some levels get more intricate than where the order in which you have to put them in. This one's very forgiving because it's the first level. It wasn't until much later that I learned if you press the U key, it'll undo the last move you just did. But I don't believe it refunds the total number of moves or pushes. So that's something to be aware of, and I don't even know if it's allowed, for instance, in tournament, <coughs> tournament play. And I've screwed this up more than once we get right there. Alright, there you go. Pretty basic. There's about 50 normal levels to this, and then there's user defined from level 51 and up. For here, you just hit escape, press L to go to the lobby, and then you move your guy over to exit, and then you're done. Okay, here's another game PGA Trek. a little bit cut off by the screen, but that's because I'm using this widescreen that's not really appropriate. Normally that would be the Enterprise, but this is the later release, version 3.1, where they had to remove all the Paramount specific stuff. So the Enterprise is now the Lexington, which kind of resembles the Voyager, <laughs> but that wouldn't be for two or three more years. We require a briefing? No. And no for save game. Uh, let's see. There you go, video demo. And we are Lieutenant Commander, we are green. So this one, you just type in commands here inside of the Fuchsia window. This is your short range scanner. This is your long range scanner. Energy, date, what your status is. This will be like red alert. Right here, sometimes we'll show pertinent information like there was just a list of where planets are. First thing they typically want to do is raise the shields by just pressing the up key. It just types, it does shields up, which would be, looks like, looks like shut up. Next, you want to set your warp speed. Usually, I have to do warp five. You have to do that by hand every time. It's kind of irritating. Then you go M for move, and then you line up the grid. So six, five. This is where Mongols are. This first number here indicates the number of Mongols. There are zero. And these other ones. That's why there's three. This is a supply depot. That's number three. That would be a one if it was a star base. And then you go. We're going to want to go here and blow up those two Mongols. So we're going to type M65 and then just pick two random numbers for that. And if we did it right, we're going to fly over there. Okay, and since this is a demo, we're going to go crazy. We're going to type L for lasers. It would be P for phasers if you're playing an older release. And here we're just going to normally use a lot less, but demo and I want them to blow up the first time 700 and then of course lasers overheat and are damaged and because now the screen's cleared there's two more sets of models over here we don't have to go kill them all as soon as you do the game's over and it totals up your your performance and that becomes your score but instead we're just going to be a quitter and quit right in space See, our score is negative 20 because we didn't do good enough. Next time, do more gooder. There you go. And that's EGA Trek. Um, this thing does have windows on it. But it can only do up to Windows 3.0. It's the last version I'll run in real mode. And sometimes the screen's a bit jacked up on here. 
Here we are. Yeah, there's a little bit of a graphical glitch there. This doesn't happen in a lot of DOS programs. It's just Windows, but running Windows on an 8088 is an exercise in patience. It's This is basically a glorified graphical file manager. There's really no applications that will run on this that you couldn't do better with DOS. Here you go, all this and reverse -y. For $4.99? I forget how the video goes. No, no, no. Here, we'll just close that. And next, Solitaire. Everybody knows this. They probably miss it being simple like this and not having to pay extra for no good reason. It has to redraw everything as it's going. At least it moves. All right, you get the idea. Let me just double click to close the file manager. And goodbye, Windows. All right. This is MS-DOS version 6.22. It's not exactly the most appropriate version for the hardware here. Most people who are enthusiasts in this would say MS-DOS 3.3 might be the better version just because of compatibility reasons and just general nostalgia, I guess. I plan to, at some point, I'm going to wipe out this 64 megabyte SD, oh, sorry, CF card and replace it with probably free DOS since we don't really have to worry about running Windows. It's a it's a hat trick. And my later plans with this, let me back out here. I don't remember what the name of the directory is. Here you go. I think it might be in DOS. Here we go. Yes. So this is QBasic. Everybody should know what this is. And here is Gorillas.bis. It takes a little bit to load because of the old hardware. And then to run it, we just come over here to start. See, pretty simple. It's gonna ask you your name. You can just press enter for the default choice. And there you go, there's your two gorillas. I usually start off with a 45 and 90. Sometimes it works right off the bat. And it's kind of the case it doesn't for the left guy. We'll try it for the right guy. Of course, the screen's cut off, so I can't see what I'm doing. Goodbye, banana. Oh, well, you get the idea. Well, beep yourself. One reboot later. And the next one would be works. I mean, that's why I bought the computer in the first place, right? Is to do 
like actual work stuff. Like, like write random text. And then of course, to calculate numbers, such as doing your math homework. Whatever. All right. So that's about it for this machine for now. One of the things, uh, let me know if there's any more interest in seeing this thing with a one of those eight and one cards, the ones with the Raspberry Pi, uh, the little Raspberry Pi built in to emulate extra features like wireless, LAN, extra storage, uh, po multiple disk images for floppy and hard disk, and so on and so forth. Maybe even install a different OS in here. Maybe we'll go crazy and find some ancient form of Unix or something like that. Let, let me know. I also plan to... I still have it in the in the background. I have a XI8088, which is essentially a similar machine to this, except for it's in a slightly different fact, form factor. It's a It's kind of an industrial PC design where almost all the components are on a single card that plugs into a backplane. And I'll let's see if I can get the captain to help me finish it, and then we'll network them together with this guy, and I don't know, we'll, we'll figure something out. I mean, it's too slow to run Doom, and it will struggle with Wolfenstein. <laughs> Tell that, and as always, uh, leave a like, comment, and go ahead and subscribe. It definitely helps me out, definitely need to keep those metrics up, and y'all have a great day out there.